If it's a beautiful day, then you know the Jared Podcast has something for you. And today it's the men's show. This is the den. Light, light here. Live on the Jared Podcast. So, so excited that you're here. Guys, we are targeting to get to 100,000 subscribers. And we can't do that if you're not subscribing. So make sure you hit the subscribe button. But before I even start with today's topic and the conversation, I want to read some comments that on the previous episode that I did with Charisma and Manasse. Big shout out to you two guys. That was a good one. And somebody was saying that Manasse's voice and Charisma's voice is the same. I can't tell Ninani Anongea. Hmm, really? Then that means Manasse can sing. Yeah? Uh, another one is... We were talking about, on this topic, we were, t- we were talking about, are we really that toxic? Uh, so somebody else said that, I share the same sentiments as charisma. We try so hard to find a reason for everything. Not everything is as a result of trauma. Some people are just bad. Some people are just evil, period. Uh, somebody said that uh, charisma is vibes. I loved this episode, part, part two, three, and four. Please, bet, get, Ben, get another topic with these guys once or twice more. Uh, the love for Jared is growing deeper and deeper. So you guys really liked Charisma and Manasseh, so I need to get, get, give them this feedback and get them back on the show as well. Uh, somebody else was saying that uh, Ben culture can be toxic. Actually, many people develop aspects of toxic masculinity from their culture. Most cultural norms and behaviors pressure men to conform to traditional stereotypes of toughness, emotional suppression, and dominance. So in addressing toxic masculinity, one has to go down to how they were raised when their culture and whether their culture was the root cause. Thank you so much, guys, for all this feedback. All is, all is grateful. Today I have amazing guys. These are like these are like the coolest people in Nairobi right now, you know. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Kimanzi and Frankie. Yeah. yeah? Is that, is that? Uh, see how cool Kimanzi is, like yo guys. <laughs> I'm used to this, you know. <laughs> VIP. Cool one, yeah, cool VIP one. thing. Let's check it. <laughs> how you doing, my George brother? <laughs> good, good man. Me, I'm alright. Mm-hmm. Just chilling. Kimanzi? Likewise. All is well. No, yeah. It's not all is well. We are trying to just yeah. put our head above the water. Yeah. With everything going on. With so everything going where well, like uh, everywhere. Life is not easy. Mm. <coughs> not just you the what life will teach you. Yeah. No matter how much you learn. Nice one. Yeah, yeah, nice one. Yeah, yeah, like 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 so much. And I've seen some of the machines you've shown me, Frankie. I don't know now what we are gonna do here. It's about it's neutral. Ah, yeah. see, hmm? we still have to make more cars. Oh, but yeah, that never stops. A big cycle, but you see, his cars are old. <laughs> Those ones are the ones that consume even more. <laughs> 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 But can you a gentleman? Thank you. So thank happy you. to have you around. Um, uh, Frankie is a public fit, fit, figure, fitness trainer, and recently you just uh, created one of the best gyms in Rongai. And you end up kashtua to Rongai. They have yeah. money, but they had never seen a gym of that caliber. Tell us, tell us about it. How is, your, how is the gym? Gym is good. Um, we're, we've been running for about, uh, I think it's been a month right now. Mm-hmm. Things are moving well. Mm. Uh, I'm excited about it. We're just literally adding as we're moving. Mm. So we started off with like a small space just mm. for you know upper body mm. equipment and all that. Now there's a studio. Yeah. There's a physiotherapy room. Mm. There's um, nutritionist there's cardio, room. Nutritionist. There's, there's, hey. Yeah, it's yeah. like all in one, man. Yeah, man. Serious business, man. Yeah, like so. una talk, they will tell you what to eat. They, you have a physiotherapist on set. Yeah. Don't scooch up on the shoulders and all that stuff. Uh, there's the cardio room. There's the room to for the upper body. You say yeah, yeah, upper body. There's a there's a lower body room. There's mm-hmm. a cardio room. Mm-hmm. So you know, wellness is like holistic. Yeah, it's not just one thing. And people usually think it's just like going into the gym, lifting weights, leaving. Oh yeah, yeah, that's but what I think. But there's just like so much. That's just a small percentage of it. Yeah. There's so much more that happens. There's the recovery aspect of it. That's why I decided to bring in the physiotherapy, mm. and then also the, the nutrition side of it as well. Mm. So we have we have the nutrition talks, the nutritionist, 
But uh, I'm also looking to bring back meal prepping because that's something that I was really passionate you've, about. Yeah, you've done that for yeah, a while. Yeah, mm. so I'm trying to figure out a way. Mm. <coughs> yeah, but I'm not taking it. 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 I'm not taking we're in Rongai, mm-hmm. a building called Raquel Plaza. Raquel Plaza. Yeah, it's just past Masai Mall. Mm. There's a there's a club there called Club Legend. Club so Legend. I opposite mean. that. Yeah, what do you want Yeah, yeah. Club, club Legend. Music, that club, club Legend ni akitambo sana. Yeah. Yeah. So just opposite that, there's like a rough road. King yatu apo tuivi. Yeah. You see the big buildings called Raquel Plaza. Yeah. It's inside there. So my Rongai peeps and Kiserian peeps, the days of doing workouts with the Simiti sides on, yani you have an even mm. shoulders. Those days have come to an end because Frankie is in the area zone. So what's the name of the gym? Just gym it. <laughs> oh, wow. Like it obvious. <laughs> yeah, that's just gym it. Just gym, gym it. <laughs> cool stuff. What do you want to do? I don't know if I'm going to talk about it. How long? Na results. Of course. You can... Unajua the um, thing no is no mwambie ukweli franki. Ni ukweli, ni ukweli. Sasa hapa 3 months ya biashara. Ah. Following the guidelines, juu kula sana. Yeah, you eat is eating right. Yeah, so mix kuma na kamande na apple juice unaona. So, unaona kama mimi, mimi me train ever since I was 16. I started working now when I was 16. So that's, that's high school, that's high school. Yeah. Were you high school in Kenya? No, no, no. Mm. Um I was in Okay, yeah, I did. I was in Brayburn up until 16 from 14 to 16 Kenya anyway. Yo bado si Kenya. Yo bado. Yo that's not a high. That's not a Kenyan high school experience. I was in Brayburn. <laughs> you know like those Brayburns are VA even if we'd meet at Funkies we wouldn't even dare talk to them. Sasa unamwambia nini si wale apart from my family has not eaten for two weeks. What do you have? how can you help you know, me? You know it's so bad you don't even meet people in the job market for Brayburn. Everyone it's all stories about <laughs> Manze chuo yetu ilikuwa ngana giheri. Yeah, but I used to have lasagna. Was it a pizza? And you know Kimanzi is talking like this was from he's from Triple S. Triple S is also a cool school. Yeah. Of course see Brayburn level, but Triple S is sasa after sasa after sasa hizi levels like na Brayburn. Listen, listen, sir. Triple S is there, up there. There are many things I wouldn't want to speak of. Yeah. And that is one of them. <laughs> oh, high school. <laughs> Not high school in general. I mean, yeah. The perception you have and what I know it of. Of Triple S. Uh, uh, no, you see It's a, it's a, it's still naweza sio hapa juu akisema vitu na mimi I was a victim. Sema. Choma. Tuna ku visit Kamiti. Unaona akisema it is a pretty good school. It's only it's you see ile ile line ya major. Mm-hmm. Mbele ya watu ni mpole. Very oh, calm. Can be deceiving. <laughs> hey. That is looks can be deceiving. Let me just leave it at that. No, it's because we used to go for for camps with Triple S. So we used to do St. John training and with then Triple St. S. John mm. wale watu Now, wote. Saint, we'd been meet up in town. We go for training because St. John's ambulance is in town. So we meet up for training. So there's Upper Hill, Triple S, and then there are chicks from my girls and state house girls. Like it's time, it's break time. Guys from Triple S are going to Java, bro. Java when you're so in so high school, Java was like for Java was like for the mafia. I can, I can, I can mobilize all people to speak of this. <laughs> and you will know ask everyone who was in that school that java thing is a lie because first of uh, all uh, dude listen those guys gave me very low self esteem let me tell you if it wasn't problem. for the jokes <laughs> we not have talked to any girl in let high school let me tell you let me tell you that's that what brought thing. the first table first of all st johns was just comprised of like mimi malin metoka siezi enda kufona first aid it look what we are saying no 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 even in school there are groups and that was more of like elites mm. oh. sisi ni watu wa drama mm. <laughs> that's what the struggle was <laughs> tupatane drama club hizo vitu vitu like you know the elite type of clubs you taekwondo club mm. St. Jones mm. French, and then now there's the French, cheering squad French club hizo mm. hata wezi taka ku involved ju they already seem too far fetched oh, okay so St. John was different so if you went to funky with St. John's only now yeah. that's a you problem if you went with like do sports when na was a rugby or a ball sisi tulikuwa naenda ball shule zingine sijui laser hill academy wasa na rudikulia kwa like bro you are suffering vitu tumeona hiyo chuo you are suffering vitu tumeona hiyo so that was brave as well for 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 frank so you started Definitely, working out yeah. when, you, when you were in yeah, high school yeah but at that time i'd gone to after that i went to uh, north wales 
So I was doing. I was, that, that's that's not in Kenya. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh? yeah. So after Braeburn, yeah, after sixteen, I went to North Wales. So that's when I actually really started because I went there on a rugby scholarship. Oh, so yeah, that's when I started like really training. Yeah, but uh, it's a long time working out. So come on, attack Kwanza. So sixteen years of working out. 16, yeah, so 17. yeah, so if you want to actually, uh, no, I'm not saying <laughs> it takes you sixteen years. I'm, I'm just saying. Yonge. <laughs> I'm just saying, <laughs> all I'm saying, no, I was so not wait, talking wait. for me. I was talking for, like you Jipati, see. Jipati 12 months. Listen, I, when you're Solid your 12 gym, months. When you're talking about your gym, for those people who want to come, people come with different goals. They yes. mm-hmm. want to come, gain some, yeah. lose some, maintain, they're all those things. The, you see, when you're getting a job, when you're in a job interview, there are all these job descriptions, your mm. role. The only thing that's tickling in your mind is how much. much. How much? I yeah. don't care how many pages I have. <laughs> yeah. The only thing, so even in a gym, how long? There's these things like, oh, so you know, you can be a client. Then they start thinking like, hey, I, in one month, no matter yeah. what I do, I'm gonna look like you. And now you see but that's, that's the not thing. The truth. That's why you always say mm-hmm. this thing is not a, a reality. It's not a it's, picture because you see people see pictures before, after. Of anything, people never see the process. The process. Mm. So that process is now what you need to put in the work. I'm saying from day one, I gear, boss. Upper, if you this is your end goal, mm. you have to put in the work. It's you just have to fall in love. You have to fall in love. You have to fall in love. You have to fall in love. So nice one, man. Make sure you check out uh, <laughs> just stream it. Um, of course, of course, you can find it on his page yeah, and yeah. then follow. If you're around those areas, please just go uh, uh, subscribe to that place. That's a good stuff. And he told me the rates are very, very friendly. Yeah, yeah. Kim Kim, what wow. have you been up to, my brother, man? <laughs> you, know, you do a, you do so many things. You do creative stuff. I really, really like how you do. Uh, even when you're doing when you're creating your content, it's just on another level. You give me so much pressure sometimes when you're on the same campaign. How, how, yeah, how is it? What be? is the pressure for? Hmm? The standard of the work that you do is standard really, really good. good. Yeah, Jimmy, you see those, you yeah, see those yeah, things, yeah. Hey. You transitions. Yeah. You know, farasi, I mean, it's like <laughs> thank heavens I've not done that. Thanks for the idea. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'll know something to do with it in a farm. Yeah, <laughs> visit Jimmy and I do too. Yeah, how is it? Ah, uh, content has been great. Mm. It's it's just always innovative to create ways to fresh ways to try and uh, communicate more or less the same things. Mm. Uh, so far, so good. Mm. And I feel like the beauty of it it's growing as an industry. Yeah, that's what I. It's not even about what I do, but what everyone is doing. Yeah, yeah. I see everyone doing fantastic things you find now there's a gel between brands, creators, mm. when people doing their own things, and people are now even going beyond borders, which means that it's reaching as many people as possible. Yeah. Mm. And that's now where I see it's so beautiful, how far much we've come. Mm. And clearly there's no end to it. Mm. There are people coming up with better ways to do things. There are people improving on what they're doing, and we keep on in going broader and broader. Traffic mm. Now I see Kenyans working with... Brands in SE, mm. brands in Rwanda, brands in yeah. Middle East. And I've worked with so many brands from outside. People who yeah. just email you from outside. Yes. Uh, they you do their campaign and na wana kulipa na mmalizana tu hivyo. So so it's a good it's a, in fact exactly. Kenya is one of the be, it's one of the countries that's very ahead in terms of content creation Correct. in Africa. Mm. Mm. Yes. So karibuni sana gentlemen. Thank you, thank you. Today's topic is we're talking about uh, being a gentleman and adulthood. So, you know, uh, our survey showed us the most gentleman men in Nairobi and you guys were like top five. Wow. This is what yeah, we you know. began <laughs> this, is what, this is the intro I was <laughs> <waiting> <laughs> for because he just makes up the intro. You want to talk Ipsos? You want science? Survey, you want to survey the Ipsos? You want to go to office? You want to say, my survey is done. No, no, no. As we buy data, so you guys came up on top and, and we, we are ready to have this conversation with you. No. So today I'll give you the honors. You just pick a question and then you pass it to Kimanzi. Then I'll also pick one. Kim Kim, chukua moja. Me, I have a phobia for questions. Yeah, you have a phobia. Now we are going to do like 13 of them. God damn. They're going to be easy though. 13 questions. Yeah, so let's start with Frankie. Hey, what do you think has been your most important life skill to survive or thrive as an adult? Mm-hmm. Cooking, budgeting, interior decor, plumbing, 
ability to fix things, driving, Jesus Christ, uh, has been the most important life skill to survive or thrive as an adult. Man, my budgeting is is, is, is not that good. Oh, your budget? Oh, cooking, your... cooking is like standard. Like, if you don't know how to cook as a grown-up, how you serve, as a human being, actually. That's true. I mean, That's what are true. you doing with your life? You That's know? true. That's number one. Uh, and especially with me, because it falls under nutrition. It's yeah. something that I have to definitely if watch. Even eat, by the way. Hey, I'm going to nutrition number. Quindia Games is not uh, nutrition. You're but, eating proper. Yes. Mm -hmm. But um, I think uh, maybe I'd say, I'd say budgeting. Because if it wasn't for that... Mm. I'm, I'm kind of erratic when it comes to spending money. Oh, really? Actually, no. I'm a miser. Mm. I save money. Then I end up buying something big at once. Oh, yeah. That's the issue that I have. Oh, yeah. So I can save, I save, I save, I save. And then all of a sudden, I One just day. go buy a car somewhere. That <laughs> I love it. One and day. spend all of it trying to fix it. And you, you get <laughs> Yeah. Frankie, you, you've shown me actually, let me just tell guys this one. You've shown me some of the project cars that you're working with. I think, yeah. I think you're like the epitome of coolness to some <laughs> of us who love cars. You know, you have, you have a Jeep, you yeah. have a Cooper, bike. your bike is equally so cool. Yeah. So, so that's what you're talking about. Like, yeah. So I can end up literally just like saving up and then boom, buy one thing and I'm like, well, oh, back to 1955 one. Lamborghini. You're like, yeah. You know, <laughs> so but like with budgeting, it's it's really allowed me to control that mm. in some sort of way. Yeah. Um, of course, because I have a family, so I have to think about them. Yeah, um, I have my business, I have to think about that as well, and then I have my own my mm. own thing which I have to think about. Yeah. Which always I always come last. Mm. Yeah, everything else comes pop pop pop. That's the thing about being a parent, man. Yeah, man. And it, does it come naturally, or you have to train yourself to do it? Um. It once once you have a kid, mm. it comes naturally. Naturally, but when you're probably dating, you mm. don't really. Yeah, you have to really train yourself <laughs> yeah. to think about the other person. Okay, but when when you have a child, man, that thing is just instinct, automatic. Yeah, yeah. I can imagine, oh, man. Yeah. Uh, so what what are the what are the options again? There was, there was budgeting. There was so cooking, was cooking, mm -hmm. budgeting, interior deco, uh, plumbing, mm. and the ability to fix things. Mm and or the ability to fix things, driving, and then F is other. I'd say one of the one of the biggest survival skills as an adult mm -hmm. is budgeting as well. Yeah. I am very keen on not spending beyond my means. I try so much. And I'm also just like you. Sometimes I can save, save up, save up, save up. Then yeah. one time my wife just walks in the house and I have a brand new PS5 and <laughs> a couple of new games, you know. Yeah. But I'm you know, like I compare how I spend money and how my wife spends money. It's, we're very different, you know. She mm. sometimes she can be a bit random. On the other hand, I I I am I'm, I'm not random. I'm not no, you random. Can't. As a man, you can't be random. Man. Yeah, and also <laughs> when I'm buying stuff, sometimes <laughs> buying stuff that just makes me feel good. Sometimes I've, I've sometimes I have to learn that. Sometimes um when I buy something, it's like a necessity or I need it for something. Mm. Yeah, I I think f for me, I had to learn that. Kujinima is not like, is, is not a, a flex. Because mm. before I used to feel like I, I have to work, I have to work yeah. so that my kids can have all this. And I had that old school mentality yeah, of me our too. folks. But nowadays, if I really want something, I yeah. get it. Yeah. If I want to travel, I'll do it. Yeah. So that's something I, I had to learn. I'm learning. Yeah. I'm still learn. learning. Kim Kim. Now uh, on the same. Mm. Interior deco. <laughs> I need these steps, guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Another bit, uh, there's also the budgeting, which mm. uh, you've talked about extensively. As someone living in Kenya, uh, mm -hmm. in this government, you mm -hmm. really have to budget everything because. Oh, you have to. Yeah, Taxes. Budgeting is also a life skill. Mm -hmm. That way, you mm. know how to, you know, what to spend on, how to spend it. Mm. Like also, Frankie said, at least we're in a space or a phase in adulthood where kujinima is not a flex. If I want to get something nice for me, mm. doesn't mean I, I don't know, let it go because it's for me. Mm. Yeah. If you want to travel, travel. If you want to buy a car that you feel makes you feel good, if you want to buy a household item that makes you feel like, yes, yeah. this, this would make me feel good. Mm. And would, like for the longest time, I didn't buy many of the things that I wanted. At the end of the 
what is what are you doing with that money mm-hmm. yes you'll do your savings you'll do your investments but for like at what point do you so you was you are you budgeting is a big is a big thing it, it it comes i would say naturally because even when you think of anything budgeting when you look for a house mm. does it fall under your budget mm. oh, okay. how well are you going to sustain it for mm. how how is going to sustain it with what you're doing is yeah. it possible i mean everyone budgets everywhere we live cars what car are you using is it good for your budget yeah. i wouldn't be driving a lamborghini right now man i wish i would mm. but mm. the budget yeah, wouldn't yeah. allow me crazy yeah yeah uh, uh, what else? In I fact, love, it's it's interesting mm-hmm. for people to also see our perspectives because I'm 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 married, no kids. Mm. Uh, Frankie has a kid. Yeah, uh, four. Uh, ah, kids. Not, not a kid. Children. <laughs> Children. <laughs> Frankie has, a, has uh, kids, yeah. families. Uh, I have a clan. I, uh, you have a clan, and then <laughs> Kim, are you dating? You know, or, or do you want to keep that private? What what are you Leo? You can So, to go No 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 it's because it's because it's because also it it will inform the, the people who are Let's, listening le, for the context why, why we have difference yeah. yeah that perception is of a married man with no kids uh-huh. this one is him I wouldn't know where to place <laughs> <laughs> he's not married but he has families yeah yeah <laughs> and there's me I'll represent the single, single Nairobi man okay yeah, good yeah. that's a very that's what I wanted guys to yes. see okay. perfect <laughs> so for you it's also budgeting you know even as a single guy you have to budget even for okay. everything okay. i i i don't really believe that though because right. me when i was single mm. man i had like just money everywhere man Now like it was just a... pouring through my fingers <laughs> out of my pocket yeah. like i had Now i didn't it. even think about it <laughs> yeah now i have to you have to think about yeah now I have but to now really you see think. it's because because when you say your experience is not everyone's because yeah. you think when you're single you'd be spend thrift you'd spend mm. like ah i have this let me do this like you have excess so yeah. you really don't think about it that much yeah mm. but now you see there's also the single of my end who think of a lot more mm. Mm. when you have like you get a lump sum amount you have your budgets you yeah. have your basics yeah. which you need to take care of mm. for you to keep uh, breathing and i don't need to call you on my g mm. i have a fix here i have a mm. fix here mm. and you also have something you need to put on the side for like if you call me up and we have a plan let's do this let's go somewhere yeah. traveling is that yeah but there's also a point where you also need to You know to growing up yourself. as an african you are saving for the future yeah. mm. there's also a fee you need to keep aside for the future the future yeah, you get also, your yoga you organize man when everywhere, i was single i was thinking like everywhere that everywhere you grow Although i was broke <laughs> <laughs> no, see, but i wasn't thinking like that that's I've really dope broke single i've been broke to the you know what drives you to actually work mm. yeah. and all those things so and especially growing up without money uh my entire life it's easier right you value money yeah because if you are true let me let, in that school you're saying there's a time when school there was a scandal someone had been stolen from mm. one of these kids uh, one of our st- uh, schoolmates had been stolen from so the story was going round mm. so the news got to me and like wow man there may be 11k in my head I was like first of all <laughs> the people who she, walk around with 11k without bodyguard <laughs> i couldn't grasp how a student could be walking around with 11k 11k is a lot bro me say you're going to solve even for our school 11k <laughs> okay yeah, yeah, yeah. you know that's, <laughs> no, you know, that's, that's like lunch you know <laughs> <laughs> just that lunch and dinner and we are going to start it bro <laughs> yeah so you see that, bro. that not having and seen it in like you see money as a giant thing like ile siku pesa nda kushika wewe eh yeah okay unasikia uki grow ule msi 160k unasema wa 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 nikipata 60k manze nta run for governor hii ndafanya hii cuz you see at that time your mindset knows only a budget of 1000 so you are seeing 60 1000s if 1000 can do this for you what about what about 60 gs that's how you see it but then now again as you grow you start learning getting better needs more needs yeah you need uh, to outgrow some of the things you used to spend on as a younger adult mm. okay And, yeah hear you the next question kimanzi you have it oh, you know <laughs> gonna into the, i like interior deco i, I do these things so oh you do interior own. deco not for anyone yeah. like for yourself for i don't i like staying in spaces i feel warm 
yeah. and comfortable with. Kimanzi is like yeah. this organized person, you know, even his house, I'm sure, is very neat, well <laughs> arranged. <laughs> 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 No yeah. masaa. Si, Usiniekea kama yule jamaa. Anaitwa na usinisemi Victor Peace. Peace. <laughs> yeah, Victor Peace hata <laughs> nilikuwa na muzaka you clean other people's houses. <laughs> 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 All right. So yeah. at what point do you shed off things your parents taught you and take on your own philosophies? That's one. Yeah. How difficult has the process been if I told you I've done it or attempted to do it? Oh. So when you say shed off things your parents taught you, I think this uh is very subjective mm-hmm. depends with how, what you are taught as a grown up mm-hmm. so if you are brought up right you don't shed off things you just take them up and use them as armor mm-hmm. like if you're taught to respect to humble to be humble in front of people to respect mm-hmm. people around you to treat everyone equally has that been the case for you yeah oh really uh, you picked up your parents philosophies uh, their way of life yeah i would say okay. mm-hmm. we were taught we were brought up in a way that were those kids who were brought up all parents are like eh na mnafanyanga watoto wenu nini una mzuri oh you guys are well mannered eh? still are uh, okay. never oh, nothing has ever wow. changed <laughs> mm. yeah mm-hmm. so i do believe for us uh bringing was more like an armor to life yeah so it's not about shedding off anything yeah. it's about taking what you're taught and now growing up and knowing how to use yeah. what you're taught to survive in the world okay. and also develop your own way mm. Mm. so like if you're taught to respect people at no point will i never not see any other human being as someone not to disrespect who's lesser than you yes so that has been me okay that's cool frankie yeah, yeah um actually what he said is is quite right um it's taking what they've taught you mm. and perfecting it so yeah. making it fit cuz usually our folks they will do extremes Oh yeah. Right? So, uh, I can speak for myself like I know for my my mom's especially. She's like super miser like oh, yeah. cuz again she grew up with nothing. Mm. Right? So, she grew up with nothing and she made, you know, something out of herself mm. to a point where she wants her children to have everything. Yeah. Right? And we had everything growing up. Mm. So, but to her she's trying to instill that that same mentality of Hey, make sure you also save and you know don't mm. spend erratically and mm. the same thing we were just talking about money right now. Yeah, yeah. So again, I became a miser because of that type how of, you picked how yeah, you grew up, yeah. Exactly, that mm. that type of uh, upbringing. Mm. But now I'm slowly learning that yeah, I mean what she taught me was great and it's helping me, you know, save my money and, and yeah. work well with my budget. <clears throat> But I can still be able to enjoy life with it because yeah. at the end of the day I still have to live. I still have to enjoy what I'm doing. I yeah. can't just like save, save, save for my children. Then yeah, that, you, that's you, about you're you. denying yourself. Exactly. Stuff. Yeah. You know, like those those rich Kikuyu <laughs> guys who all of us are proud to do you happy. And then you bro, say, I've met a couple of those guys, <laughs> and they're super wealthy. Those yeah. people, but have they don't want it. Like if they if they were to buy for, for them a fancy car, maybe maybe a Prado, and that would like be yeah, like the top like of. That's, But these people are well capable to even buy a G-Wagon. These people can buy anything. They can buy anything. They can buy a G-Wagon and they're not broke. Yeah. You know, these people are, the people who buy G-Wagons on like loans, you know, yeah. this one can buy cash. cash. They're, still, they're still liquid, you know. That's what But I, they still, the fathers, the Prado and probably second hand. That's yeah. my Kukwe can pick up Kajon. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> But you, see, you know they are loaded with the children. That's how you always know. That's the thing. Especially you daughters. You see the kids. Yeah. yeah. You see with the daughters, you're like... Eh. Cause that's that's what that's what they do. They invest in their kids. Yeah. School. They'll go to the. They'll go to Turi. They'll go. You know, like they'll yeah. go to New what? Ah, huh? yeah, Uliyanda. New, New, New Wales. Wales. New Wales. They'll go to yeah. New Wales. Ah, <laughs> North Wales. North Wales. <laughs> Wales. Wales. That's it. Mimi mesema Wales. Mimi mesema New Wales. Rojo tumesema muhuri mushiri. Huko ata tunanga north south. Ile side we ndio ile side. Una some ya pale juu. Hapo ile. Hiyo ile side nyingine pale chini. Not it. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. I, I picked up also the philosophies from my folks, but I, it's how different they were. Like my dad was also more of like let's more reserved, more like mm. you no, know, I'm not going to spend money on anything mm. if it's not a bill. Yeah, that's uh, my dad. But my mom on the other hand was a bit sure. free flowing, you know, she would buy you guys some expensive stuff, some nice things, you know. So when I've grown up now I've had I'm not, I'm, I'm like a blend of the two where mm. one, on one hand I can be a bit reserved on the other hand i can also just go for the good things but also the philosophies in life have um 
some t- at some point, especially when I was growing up as a teenager, I never used to think they they, they work. You know, like um, like what are some of the things they taught me? Like like some of the things, some of the values think, some of the values that they teach you, you feel like nizautiaji. And then later mm. on, when you're an adult, you're like, okay, these things actually do make sense, and I need them. Yeah, I need to start practicing them yeah. at, at this point of my life. Let, yeah. uh, if it me, like with with schooling and education and all that, oh man, me, I just felt like I was, it was just being forced on me. I oh really? Like, I, I wanna... Isn't that that phase of teenagehood, trying to be your own person? Yeah, where, yeah. Where there's that. Rift. You have yeah. You have to have. You have to become like a rebel of some a, sort. A rebel Were you a rebel? That, I mean, I was bad. Man. Oh, really? I was bad. <laughs> yeah. Bad way. Depends on I where. Was ba- I was bad with everything. <laughs> <laughs> but it was just a phase. Like, uh, was it? Is okay. it so <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's still bad. <laughs> no, no, no. But I was, I was always different. Okay. Like, it, that's just always been me. Even, even now, like, it, clearly, I'm, I'm still different. Yeah. I like doing things the opposite way. Yeah. But. Um, like I was saying about the education thing, at that time I didn't see it as something that was necessary and all that. And then I was just like, okay, I might as well just do it because mm. I mean, she wants me to do it, so might as well do it. And but do- now mm. I value mm. the education that mm. I had because I'm utilizing it in every everything that I do, especially when it comes to running a business. Yeah, because I did, I did. Um, my first degree, I did um, uh, business first. management. Business management. That was the first. Second. Yeah. How many do you have? I have, I have a first degree in uh, business management and I have a master's in international business management. So you have two of everything. Brav, yeah. brav, you know. <laughs> <Guys>. <laughs> Guys, I see what you're trying to do, Two by two. <laughs> okay, that's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. They never used to like school. You know me, if I went to Braceside, I'd live there. Like, I'd just go get in and tell my folks, I'll come see you once a year. But now you see you... It's from where you're from. It's, people are yeah. always from nice <laughs> environments. So for them, this is... I don't want to stay in school, you know? Oh, my Papa, God. Mama. I'm sure their food was good, man. Man, everything was good. Oh. Life was good. Yeah, man. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> nice one. one. Let like, me ask this one. When did you realize that life is fickle and short? Damn. Wow. Is that nah, every, it's isn't getting that every deeper, day? right? Huh? Isn't that every day? Oh, that's for you every day? No, the, the older you go. No, okay. When was the first time? I answer your question first, you man. Yeah. W- Actually, this, yeah, it's yours. When did you, fa- when did you first realize mm. that life is fickle and short? Jibu kwanza. Yoni swali yako. Mimi, I'd say... When I lost my cousin, when we were still kids, mm. I think he fell into like a, a, somebody had dug a pit latrine and just left it open. So by the time they were trying to get him out, he was dead. Ah, oh, I was like, that's what? Sad. We were just playing with him like the other day. I think that that was that's that's when I was like, life can be today you're here, tomorrow you're there. You're gone. Yeah, Frankie. Man, um, me for me it happened. I think it happened way later in life wasn't that young mm. um that's when i lost my grandma oh really yeah and you know my grandma's always been there like she's been literally my mom mm. right um so when she passed that was the first close you know death experience i've ever had mm. and it hit me hard yeah i had like panic attacks i was like yeah Sometimes just burst into tears. Mm. It was it was surreal, but yeah. uh, I had to learn to you know live with it. Yeah, uh, I did a couple of therapy sessions with that situation and mm. then just accepted it. Mm. But I feel like that was the first thing that really hit me hard. Yeah, yeah. Yo, death comes at anyone. Mm. Hard, man. And can when you experience it, that's when you're like, wow. And change. nowadays, like you start noticing it, it's getting closer and closer. Yeah. Um, I was when when we were in um, Watamu, yeah. and then we found out about uh, a, a friend oh, of mine, yeah. someone I know, like the way I know you guys here. Yeah, yeah. Then someone just comes and tells me, "Hey, they've passed." Yeah, I'm just like, "What? How?" Yeah. At first, it doesn't click, mm. and then that fear sets in, like, "Yeah, you're not uh, immortal." Oh man, that's crazy. I also <laughs> like even later on as an adult, I, I lost a friend called Glenn. Yeah. So he just bought a bike. He was such a cool biker. Nini, nini. And since that day, I, I even I just started fearing biking. And up to today, I've, I've never gotten over that yeah. fear. But I believe if I was to be a biker, yeah. I'd be a very good biker. 
Like, cause well, you say that, I'm and then super. when you start, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, when you pull that throttle, hey, yeah. you want to go fast and faster. The best thing to do when you're getting a bike, just get a bike which doesn't exceed the CCs that you'd push yourself past. Like yeah. you get a bike with, don't get a thousand CC bike. Yeah, get something that's like five hundred. I wanted it's still powerful. It's still you know? powerful, but you can control that power and it limits you a little bit. But yeah. <sighs> Kim Kim, when did you realize that life was fickle and short? So gathering from what you people have said, it's just a death experience you experienced from most probably. Yeah. 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 Okay, we we'll good at that. Because I'm trying to Because now I don't know, maybe if you maybe a kidnapping experience where the person never ever came back. Like, uh, no, no, yeah, no, so no, you I'm don't trying to any, Yeah, like you don't know. Uh, that. No, I was just trying to Take it back to see at what point. Mm, yeah. Uh, but then, since you guys pick in for, you know, I say life is fickle and short, it's always a death experience that always uh, hit you hard. Or yeah. Again, mine was also way later in life when uh, I think growing up, did I? I no, no, none that I can remember very vividly. Yeah. But some, this was way past. Uh, in the 2000s, so was it 14 or something? Yeah. Yeah, 14 to 15. Mm. When I, I lost, uh, what is it called, four friends mm. that were an accident. Oh, sorry. Uh, but we were together like two hours ago. Oh, was really? It two, 30 minutes, actually. Mm. So they actually dropped me home. What? So, they had just dropped you home? So we, we did the New Year's party together. Okay. Like uh, we were mm-hmm. together to Kufukamuaka. We had the night proper. Yeah, we, like literally just chilling, enjoying the night as any, any Normal, person yeah. would do. Yeah, then in the morning, dropped me home. Mm-hmm. Me just went to rest. Because uh-huh. that was around six. So I went to rest and call it a... Uh, Proper New Year turn of <coughs> successful night, yeah. Yeah. So while I was just trying to catch some sleep, my bro wakes me up. Mm. Like so, you hadn't even fallen asleep yet. Yeah, you know when you're just yeah. starting to sleep, and then now in a few minutes, my bro's waking me up. But the way he's waking me up is not. Yeah, it's like it's panicky. Why? Mm. You, why is your face looking like this? You seem to am sure. Hey, I'm cast. We, you know. Mm. Yeah. Then he gives me the call. Now. The then girlfriend was crying. The then girlfriend of one of them crying like, ah, me watch how happy. I'm like, I don't know I'm in a drop, mm. but what's wrong? And then she's not even talking. So mm. Of course, now at that point, you're like, hey, what's up? Then the brother to the girlfriend picks and does the same. Now tells me, hey, man, the news, uh, there's this thing that these people have been involved in an accident and everyone's passed on. So I'm like, what the hell? In Nairobi? No, it was on Mombasa Road. No, not Mombasa. Yeah. So at that point, I, you know, is you see the way you see in movies, like a phone falls from the ear and I just found myself outside the house. Mm. At seemingly at what point you yeah. just want to seclude yourself and imagine like, hey, is it really true? Like, hey, see those guys. Just dropped I you. remember actually when I was dropped, I hugged everyone of them. Hey, bro. But an eh? But I like it to cheers, cheers, cheers. Mm. Nice to say, nice night. Let's talk tomorrow. Yeah. And that, okay. Uh, the car had, so yeah, four passed, but not everyone passed. Mm. So my the one we schooled with was my direct friend. Mm. Now, I now became friends with the family. So there was a cousin, the brother. Mm. So it was more of a family incident where they lost a brother, a cousin, two Ooh. cousins. But now all of them would become friends for a long time. Mm. So that happened at that time. So my then, my direct friend, the first one who I interacted with, with the family, he survived. Mm. So yeah, I uh, actually, I, I left home and because now I actually was with my folks. So I was like, of course, I went and st- I was like, now do you get such information to your folks. That's yeah. Crazy. So I tried to talk to my mom. She understood. And then also eventually my dad too. Mm. So yeah, I went to view the bodies. And that time I'm looking at the bodies. I'm like, yeah, you guys are actually gone, gone. Mm. And that's, you know, the bodies are fresh from the accident scene. Yeah. So I was like. Me, that's one thing I could never do. Like, no. I, I know I when think, my grandma passed, I, I, I just couldn't look. I think I became, I, I'm immune to those. I don't know. I can You didn't feel like your whole organs were just collapsing when you saw that? I can chill with uh, that thing easily. Yeah. 
I don't know. I I saw them. I was like, what? Yani, this yani you guys are gone, gone. And then now you see, there was also a friend to the to the bro. Hmm. So when the family came and saw me, they came hugging me and like crying. I'm like, eh. Hmm. Hmm. So you know, you know, it's morning also. <clears throat> yeah. And one of the guys tells me, wow, you know, we had the accident was, and a friend was involved too. So they all asked you because we were together. So I was the friend that had also been in the accident. So they are there like, ah. Man, they, oh, they thought you were part of it. Yeah. So the uh, survived. It was actually crazy when now my friend actually had to wake up who had Aga Khan. Mm. So, you know, when you know when you uh, wake up from an accident, that's the last memory you got yeah. to maybe have. So he was waking up and asking the whereabouts of everyone is asking is gone. Mm. So he's just, hey, where's my bro? Hey, bro. You just woke up. There are no things we can tell you. He's doing what he nani. Nine. Hey, that was into the coma. So yeah, that was, uh, that, that was heavy. Yeah, I now you see that for me was very mm. on my face. Yeah, we were with yeah. you guys a few minutes ago. Now you're gone. And now you're gone. And actually the funniest thing, of course there's some takeouts. I it taught me to celebrate every moment. Mm. Because one again, we were celebrating, but now you're no longer with these people. Mm. And also the funny thing, the one of the funniest thing I found, like now when we are planning uh, during the funeral plannings and arrangements, one of my one of the guys didn't have any photo. He what? Like didn't have any photo mm. Mm. at all. Like you know, us we are people in the social, so we we'll always have photos. Mm-hmm. That guy didn't have a sing- the photo that was used on his uh, funeral program was him entering for money le pita upigwa kwa ID. Mm. So and you can imagine this is someone who was in finished even campus and had never had any photo. So you see that or like, eh, man, this people, what are memories? What memories will people? What memories will people remember? Yeah. Them? Because the, the, sorry. You know, it's that. Because the, the other, because the other question was what effect did it have on you? I think we've talked about that. Mm. But then the final question is, do you have a will? A no. will? Yeah. No. <laughs> I also don't have a wheel. Not yet. No. I think also it's a lot about <laughs> having worked in marketing and also like uh, wheels, uh, fedora covers. Those are very, it's, I don't know if it's taboo, it's African for us to avoid them as much. Because also the way wheels have been sold for us for the longest time, Lazmo Kwesonko, no, no. Like when you hear wheels, someone is living in property, thing, yeah. you live in, I don't know. Like right now, going by everything, yeah, Frankie. You should write a will. <laughs> <laughs> now, and you see, when I say that, you think of death. But <laughs> people forget wills can be updated. Uh, no, yeah, definitely, yeah. Can be changed. Mm-hmm. Hey, will is crazy fact, for me, yeah, man. So, uh, like, I feel like it's a bit traumatic. No, it's again, like you're wishing, wishing It's death. like you're calling death. Yeah. That's no, how I that's look at thing. it, people, you know? That's, what, that's the... Pro- you see that right there? Like, bro, I don't have. want to write it. But you're, you're, Afri- working towards, you're working towards uh, being able to provide for your kids once you're gone, right? Yes. Yeah. So why not just put it on paper? You know, this things I read somewhere where they say every Bro. day you live, <laughs> you're getting closer to your death. Yeah. So such things. I, I personally I don't have one, yes. Yeah. Why, why don't you have one? See, not as Jeff I as in Kudavit Bado, I I've not gotten right. to that point in life where I imagine, oh, now I can do a will. I can say for the longest time it's always for the I take one. Mm-hmm. Like you see, akina masongo akiacha wili. Yeah, Ricky Ruby akiacha wili unaona anaacha nini uzito. Okay, okay, interesting. That's a good That's question. Do you, you guys have wheels? Anyone who's listening to us, anyone who's watching us? Okay. Actually, it's you, Frankie. I'll go first. Mm-hmm. Huh? What do you think you have contributed to society? What legacy do you want to leave behind? Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Who writes this question? Hey, what would you want written on your tombstone? Boom. What? That's crazy. It's a very deep question. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you start with, we start with you, Frank. It was yeah. a question. Well, how what do, do you, you think, think you've contributed, contributed to society? society? Um, like I was telling you off camera, mm. that uh, for me personally, <clears throat> when it comes to wellness, mm. I want to make it accessible to everyone. Makes sense. I want the richest of the rich and the poorest of the poorest to be able to access mm. wellness. So 
I feel like when I first started, when I when I came back to Kenya and started, um, you know, just gym it. Yeah. At that time, like personal training wasn't like really a thing, and I remember even just going to to gyms and asking them, "Hey, can I train my clients here?" They were like, "Yeah, uh, we can employ you." And I'm like, "No, no, no." I just want, I want to come to, yeah. train. Just come train my clients. Mm. We, orga- we organize a, uh, an arrangement. Mm. I pay you for that service and I'm off. They were shocked. I'm like, what? Nah, what type of system is that? Mm. There's only so, something about people who have studied abroad. Yeah. How yeah, they approach this I think business. it expands <laughs> your thinking, That's right? A, yeah. It expands your thinking. That, it uh, and it really you opens are. you up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, that system was already working in the UK. Yeah. But here it was foreign. Yeah. So. I remember I used to, I decided I'm going to start training my people where? Uhuru mm-hmm. Park. Oh, really? So I was training, yeah, my first Was that client. the first time you went to Uhuru Park? I think so, yeah. <laughs> it actually is. Oh, really? <laughs> so you usually end up yeah. swimming about 20 more. <laughs> hey, Uhuru Park, you're going to be in the sun. Uhuru Park, even when I was a kid, I remember being taken to the so, Pastor Pius New yeah. Rules Crusade, man. <laughs> like, it's crazy. Yes, yeah, So, yeah. So, um, I used to train my client there, and I used to train them with a towel. Mm-hmm. So I tell, I'll tell her, hold on to the tile up top. I hold it at the bottom and then they use me as resistance. So if they're doing bicep curls, they're using me as resistance. If they're doing uh, back rows, <laughs> yeah. So literally I, I had to convince this lady and told her, look, it's not about the equipment. It's about the knowledge. Mm. And I have the knowledge to transform you. Mm. And I, I thank her every day because she's the one who literally gave me that opportunity to to do that. Did she transform? Oh, yeah. Yeah, mm. yeah. Even I have Ukienda Chini 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 on my page. You'll mm. see her. She's there at the before and after. And that's how even I started posting on my social media. Mm. I just started doing transformations. And then, again, I used to start, I used to post myself like topless and stuff. Like yeah. that. So people used to wonder, who is this guy? Where is he from? Yeah. People don't even think, didn't, didn't think I was Kenyan. They thought yeah. I was either South African or American. Yeah. So fast forward, when that picked up and my social started growing, Gyms now started inviting me to mm. come train and train just even me just work out in their premises as long mm. as I take photos and all that. Mm. And that's cool. how it, it started. And then from there, they gave me the opportunity to um, now train my clients there. Mm. So I was allowed to train there for free. Bro, I haven't paid for a gym in at like like Did seven years. Oh, really? Favorite gym. <laughs> they would just be like, Yeah, come through, come through. So um, with that it allowed me to grow the name just gym it mm. and now you can throw a rock and hit a personal trainer anywhere you know yeah and my dms are always full people always like even when i did my open day yeah trainers were just coming in and i was i was actually surprised the amount of trainers were coming in and they were like yo i started training guys because of you okay. when you used to do your vlogs when you used to I show your, for. yeah your content on it. so that to me just changing an industry and having that much impact on mm. an industry, mm. I think that's that's what I'm, I'm I'm mostly proud of, and that's what I want to leave behind. That's my legacy. So it it now goes beyond to you just training people to work out, but you've also now made other people fulfill their dreams, bro. Like you know, the the crazy thing is, back in the day, someone would look at personal training as as in umeshindwa kwenda shule, yeah. yeah. And me, I'm here with a masters, and I'm doing personal training. You get, yeah. yeah. So it's I've turned it into a career. Like mm. now it's lucrative. Like you can be a personal trainer and live quite well. And yeah. that's what I'm showing. Like I'm showing people, hey, look, this I've opened a gym. I have cars. I'm able to take care of my kids. Like I'm able to do all this just mm. from personal training. Mm-hmm. You get so yeah. that that's the whole mindset that I'm trying to change. That it's not it's not just like for random, you know, people who can't really uh, progress in life. This is something that you can actually can actually do. Yeah. So that's um, so that's one thing you feel like you've contributed positively. I feel like that's to, something to that to I've society. contributed to society. So, wow. Yeah. What what but, can I? What legacy do you? Yeah, that's again, mm. that's a legacy that I want to leave behind. Mm-hmm. In terms of people should should know that hey, this thing. Yeah. I mean, I'm here because I saw Frankie doing A B yeah. C D. Yeah. And I want to take just gym it just gym it to the world. Okay. Yeah. What would you like written? My tombstone. On my tombstone. Mm. Yeah, that's weird. You're that's out, Wako. Yeah, you. We're just designer. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's yeah, that that's dope. That was crazy. Yeah. The first question was what's what impacts? 
what do you think you have contributed to society? What have I contributed to society? I think um, in the creative space as well, I also didn't know that I was in the middle of something big. When I started doing podcasts, I was one of the first people to do the vis- the video version of a podcast. You yeah. know, podcasts were mostly audio. Yeah, yeah. And also podcasts were for the urban people, the Kilimani, Kileleshwa, the you know, the the cool kids. I tried to make them to to make them connect more with like just Kawaida people, you know. And that has given birth to so many podcasts that that are just a, that for people to believe that you can actually do podcasting because this is also what I do for a living. But for me, it's to show that you can achieve whatever you want if you really put your your heart and soul to it. Because I came from a pretty humble background, you know, like, um, I don't know how, for some weird reason, God gave me fans who are very urbanized. But, like, the school I went to in class 8, man, we didn't even have electricity, bruv. Like, mm. it, was a stra- it was deep in the slums, you know? Yeah. And for me to just get here, uh, it's glory to God, and to also just show people that, you can be anything that you want to be if you put your heart and soul to it. So Amen. that's one of the things that I know I feel like have impacted society. What's the other question? The other one is, um, what legacy do you want to leave behind? A legacy of, is that you can make impactful content and it will still propel you to greater heights. Yeah. The other one for Tombstone, I also don't know, man, what I want to read there. <laughs> that's crazy, man. Kim. What 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 uh, what's the question? Contribute yeah, the contribution. What contribution do you feel? You have I feel those are uh, usually hard questions like describe yourself. Yeah, yeah. Like it's easier when people describe <laughs> what they know of you, the yeah. impression you give. Yeah, but uh, as of now, mm-hmm. I I feel like uh, I've had an impact in content creation. You have, so just elevating it to better heights, mm. and I've also met many people get uh, calls dms people ask for all the advice direction mm. all these things which now made me evolve to try and be a just content director as well yeah um have been worked in the market space for the longest time you have i i also know i have the knowledge to share you do mm. in fact let me remind you kim i don't know if you remember but back in the day when i was like i'd say like four years ago five mm-hmm. i was still trying to grow like my space in the content space I remember reaching out to Kimanzi, like, hey, let's meet up. And we met up at Hallingham, Java. Yeah, do you remember? Yeah, I have to remember. And I was playing him my music. I was like, so how do I make it big on Twitter? How mm. do I become this influential person? And he was very kind. He actually shared so many tips. Do you remember that? Yeah, I remember that how... time uh, in Java, that uh, Hallingham. Hallingham, yes. yeah. So, yeah, I've consulted with you before. And that was great, man. Yeah, so I feel like uh, I've been able to create an environment where people can, like... Like even Frankie says, it's something that you can live off. Mm. It's not been an easy journey, mm. but if you believe in it and you like, you know, this this is it. We are going to do this until it's right. Mm. Yeah, I'm I'm from a space where it's not what I studied. No one studied content. Nobody. Mm. So, uh, but if now they open schools, it would be great. Jared would way. be the first one. We are opening a school. I would be a lecturer. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> of course. So, but. To get to a space where you're even teaching the older generation, not even teaching them knowing, oh, this guy is actually doing something that he lives off and it's something legit. And we see it. Like you see with content, you will see it on your face. Mm. Whether you like it or not, it will go to wherever it will go. And people will be able to see it. I've come across and I've been able to impact people. That's I've gotten from yeah. many people. People can, oh, I liked what you did. I started, you inspired me to also start doing content. I also like the way you do things. I also want to do things in this way. Or even people who are doing content say, oh, you inspired me to change, uh, do something in a way. But even one of the, f- not even funny, content even aside, like you see, even when I was doing content or even when I do content, for me, something like fashion has always been something mm. in me. I wouldn't yep. even say that fashion is something I picked up along the way. I don't yeah. Even the way you're dressed right now, man. Like, I you know, it just looks... Fit, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> ah, watch <out>. <laughs> All black. <laughs> you can't go wrong with all black. Yeah. <laughs> but even along the way, I used to... Anytime I take photos, just mm. dress... Because even I never used to take photos, even of myself. Oh. Mm. I remember a long time ago. I just... You know, when you just have to go meet your friends, I used to have this photographer friend who was like, all the time, not even... They just had a phone, like... 
manzi unadunga ngafiti si mm. kupanga kitu mapicha mm. like even for his own me i'm like ah, manzi inaja si la si ah, yeah. then at some point you know that constant bug in us you piga tu mapicha that mm. wefanya hivi nipige basi akapiga picha kwa wow 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 nani nitume hiyo picha tu amemwasha then now you just start uh, posting and then you know now it goes beyond now your friends community now to yeah. different people people and then over time of course with looks the first people to respond are women mm. they compliment you men wouldn't compliment you yeah women are always like mm. the best na, na za unume zitakuwa zile za eh na leo umeniona nani leo na interview no, wapi wa baby wote you know yeah, like you men see, give weird compliments you know yeah. was way later that was even kitambo na una kuna mtu anakufa kinyata sasa kuna mtu kwa drip that's a guy's way of telling you men you look so nice you know that's the time mm. where drip came from ume drip Is oh it? really kwani Sinio na una kuna mtu anako kwa drip kinyata saa hii then slowly slowly so drip okay yeah it's now you know the way things just get shortened and shortened and now over time it started what i girls complimenting is nice and all mm. those things mm. and it's beautiful and you enjoy it it's compliments no one yeah. doesn't but now what i came to what actually touched me more was guys mm. now starting to tell you even one it was funnier women were DMing me to advise their boyfriends on to I'm like eh una taka nvunje ndo ata oh it was crazy but i was like ah what is the event a wedding ah mwambie basi ya adunge abc you do some pinterest sent mm. you don't even know you have been a stylist without being one yeah and then over time men now started coming personally eh mm. manze kuna venye manze nimeona kuna lukundi ulivaa naweza mm. dai naweza pata wapi naweza buy wapi and then now over time now you start seeing more and more men are yeah, actually coming. taking interest in it and do, you're able do you guys to... notice also like a, a men catch up a bit later because i'm sure i don't know about training maybe training can be different mm. but but do, do you get women fans first and then men came later or oh no no, no. majority you... of, of my fans were women even now he's oh. he's shirtless for fans oh yeah, yeah he's yeah, shirtless yeah. for crying <laughs> out loud <laughs> Also I feel like men especially in my industry men feel like wanajua like ah hii si naingia tu na kwani what is so hard in kufanya hiyo yeah. but yeah. ladies are, are willing to to be taken through the mm. whole journey mm. yeah. I've, i've had men bring their wives and i'm like hey so you guys join it ah, mm. nah, 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 but that's now in training you also mm. saying in fashion it would, it was the ladies showing the love first Yeah. And then later on they are like please advise my guy. Now the guys come yeah, later. even beyond now the ones you are telling of now you just find guys randomly even you'd go to somewhere someone man I want to dress like you. Mm. Mm. So what, what is it what does it entail? And slowly by slowly you get people telling you oh I saw something you where can I get it? I saw this. Oh send me your tailor's number. Send me the plug for this thing. Send me for this thing. And people come and tell, "Oh, man, then you'll get by the way." Mm. Yeah. You li li wear some manzini li anda mali. People want to tell you the excitement of yeah. the impression it got. And li anda wedo flani hata wasal kwa thani mina or such mm. type of things. Yeah. And yeah, also that it, to some extent it's been impactful mm. in there's the content bit, there's that bit, but also generally with life. Mm. Mm. Okay. Mm. Good stuff. Because even for us the jury at first when he did our most of our fans were just women, you know. Mm. When you do events it's mostly the women would come. Hey, but now cream. but now I'm happy that I see so many men uh, show up at our events. Mm. When you do the campus tours, like we went to Moi, we had so many men just mm. show up. And for me that makes me feel good as well even as a guy. Yeah. Yes, I really love the support from the women because women go hard, man. Like women go hard, yeah. Like they could care less, you know. Mm. But for the guys even if they caught up slowly, I'm happy that they've they've Eventually. still caught up so that's a good thing yeah.